All right, as ever, it's all thanks to Echo, uh, India's tech first insurance company. It's Watto's Wrap. You've been loving Watto's Wrap all year. If you want to show some love, hit the subscribe button. I feel a little bit desperate asking, but here we are. You know, it's the internet. We need it. Hey, uh, Watto, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs> we need it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. All pretense is down. I'm not trying to persuade people to do it. Please do it. Hey, Watto. Um, all right. Well, look, you called this at the start of the season. I'm just going to ask you about it. It's happened a few days after we last spoke. MSD, he's captain of CSK again. And I know the news cycle's been and gone. CSK have had a couple of games. Um, but I, I guess what I want to ask is, like, um, you did call it. You said while he's there, and I'm paraphrasing you, while he's there, it's going to be very strange for someone else to be captain because MSD is kind of the all-power, all-knowing all, all, power, all god uh, of CSK. Um like while it's amazing having MS Dhoni at CSK, does the does that fact also restrict CSK in some way as well? That like they're just kind of with they're just in inseparable until MS Dhoni leaves the franchise. Uh, I think well MS he can play on for as long as he wants. Like he, he's batting he's batting as well as he has over the last couple of years as well. Um, with the the impact that he's had in that sort of back end of the, the games. But for me, just the, the power that he has within the group, as soon as you, you can see, like the last couple of games that he's taken over, it's just, it just looks a bit different. It just looks a bit, it just looks a bit different because just the, just the influence that he has and the impact that he has on a group. Um, and that's why when I heard that initially when Jadeja was going to take over, um, I was just, I was blown away because everyone knows that when MS, MS is on the field, just the control and the respect and just the aura that he has around him as a leader, you can't, like, it's, it's, it was going to be so difficult for Jadeja no matter what. And that's why, for me, I was, I was surprised that, look, if if MS didn't play in a game, if he got injured or they rested him for a game, then absolutely, I thought that was always a great chance for Jadeja to take over and, and just do a couple of games here and there. But to sort of be captain takeover when MS is on the field was always going to be very difficult for, for Jadeja. So um, it's, in the end, I do feel a little bit sorry for, for Jadeja because he's a, he's a great guy. He's an incredibly skilled cricketer and he's, who's only getting better. So to be able to see that he's had to sort of like publicly put himself like into that position, I feel, I feel sorry for him because he didn't, yeah, he didn't, they didn't have to, or he didn't have to sort of get to that stage. Um, but in the end, it was, I think it was, it's the, it's the right call for, for MS to sort of take over. Um, I suppose I, I knew, know from my perspective, I did that one the last year that I played for the Rajasthan Royals. I stepped down as captain. It's a, it's a really big call to sort of step down when there's a bit of pressure on you to sort of to step down. It's a big call and you feel like a little bit sort of publicly shamed in a way I did um, that you have to sort of just put your hand up and say, you know, it's not my time, even though this is what I've always wanted to try out and, and do and be a part of right now. It's just not the, not the right time. And for Jadeja to be able to do that shows a lot of character about himself. Just put his hand up and say, you know what, it's actually better for MS to take over. So huge kudos to him to be able to put his hand up and just say, you know what, let's just give it to MS um, because MS is, is one of the best captains that's ever played the game. His influence that he has on a game, on individuals, and especially under pressure. When the game's on the line, when a bowler, for example, when a bowler needs some direction, some clear, simple direction, that's when you need your leader and the best leader on the field to be able to just redirect the bowler to give themselves the best chance to have the freedom to execute their skill. And that's what MS has always done so incredibly well. So, um, yeah, it's just a shame from Jadeja's point of view because he's such a great guy, incredibly skilled. He's given so much to CSK as well. And he'll continue to, but for him to have to actually just publicly sort of be a captain and then step down. Yeah. I feel a bit sorry for him. Do you reckon what happened? What I was that, um, cause I, I've heard Jadeja say that he was expecting to be given the captaincy at the end of last season. And then obviously CSK win the tournament. And then and I think everyone sort of expects Donny to then retire. Cause it's like, why like go out on top, but then Donny's like, no, nah, I'm going to play again, but they've already probably told Jadeja he's going to be captain. So do you think that actually might've been the sort of confusion? Cause as you said before, like, MS Dhoni plays if MS Dhoni wants to play, but they kind of maybe got into a bit of entanglement here where they've or probably already said, well, you're already at the end of your career. We need to move on a little bit. So we'll try Jadeja, but then MS is going to play. And then it's just like, oh, it's all been like kafuddle because it's never going to work out if MS Dhoni is still behind the stumps and got the best view of the game. And then, and then Dhoni said as well that 
were missing Jadeja out of deep mid wicket because he's such a great outfielder as well. And I think that was Emma Stone's way, way of saying, like, just get him as far away as possible. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, 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 do, but do you think that might have been sort of what happened? There's a bit of confusion about Emma Stone retiring and promising Jadeja their captaincy. I don't, I don't think that, like, even if Jadeja was told that he was going to potentially take over, but things do things do change, um, and right. if MS wants to play on, then he absolutely can do absolutely whatever he wants because he's got he's led CSK to another another championship. Um, he also you could see deep down he had a bit of a point to prove around his batting in particular, and he showed that this season. A couple of games where he's um, batted incredibly well in clutch situations just you know proves the skill he's got. So it's probably more so just proving to himself. Um, so everything that he's given MS has given the franchise. He can he can make the decision on you know when he when he wants to step down. Um, and there's no doubt you could see a one side it would have been finishing on top, perfect. But MS again, he can if he wants to play on. He's still and he's showing. He's still keeping incredibly well. Now he's batting very well as well this this season. And as a leader, he's not. He's only going to continue to sort of just grow as a, as a leader. MS so. Um, I think if that was the case, if he wanted to play on for however long, however long, then Jadeja was always just had to just push that back a couple of years, that's or a year or two, and and that's that's absolutely fine as well because you just want the best person, the most skilled, the most experienced leader leading a, leading a franchise, um, and the whole franchise is built around has always been built around MS. Everything's been built around him, whether it's um, just the whole leadership structure, how the team dynamic and everything is built around. Um, is built around MS to a point where, which is an incredible thing, whether the way CSK does the media, um, the way the whole sort of team set up, um, doing appearances at the start to make sure there's so much like downtime between the season, because otherwise, you know, like MS, he's always, he's very much a um, someone who's in demand. So that's the beauty of just sliding into, uh, that it was for me sliding into CSK. It was just such a slick operation because it was all built initially around just making sure that because MS was in such demand and that's the way it's always been. So that's, that's the beauty of, of CSK. And that's why when MS is around, he's, he's the man to be able to lead the, lead the franchise. And speaking of leadership and transition, it's a bit of an adjacency to the IPL, Watto, but Ben Stokes has been named England test captain. Mm. Uh, He's said since that he's going to put every effort into improving England's test results. Uh, you, you know, you were an all-rounder of, um, you know, note in a great position to understand, I suppose, the load he's shouldering purely from a, even just from a skills perspective. You've captained your country uh, in test cricket as well. Very similar numbers as well in test cricket to Ben Stokes. I'm um, not sure many people would know that, but look, you know, what, what do you make of that decision um, to make him captain? Um, how, how do you see it as an all-rounder who's done similar things to him? What sort of impact do you think it will have, unless you put an IPL layer on it, you know, lowering the IPL as a priority for him will have on his game? Yeah, there's, you can see why England certainly went down that path of making Ben Stokes captain, because apart from Joe Root, there's not too many other real sort of standout leaders that are around English the English test set up at the moment. So you can see why they've gone down the route of Ben Stokes. He's he inspires his teammates, the way he plays, the way he takes on the game with bat and ball. He's very um, you can see he's very positive and aggressive the way he wants to play the game to try and make a difference. So there's so many upsides with just him as a leader, leading from the front as a starting point. Um, I suppose my biggest concern around it is one, just knowing how much like mental um, energy it takes to be an all-rounder as a starting point, let alone physical, because, you know, as, a, as an all-rounder, you're always engaged just about in the, in the game. And then add on top of that in a, test, in, a, in a test match alone, add on top of that, you're working through just as a leader, trying to get the best out of everyone else around you. And then just put on top of that all the media commitments and, um, appearances that that goes to being a, a, the captain of your country as well i just i think it's a i think it's a huge workload that's going to be really hard for him to be able to sustain and knowing that there's been last year he had some time off because of um due to mental health um issues in that so 
it's going to be really, I think the biggest challenge for him is just around how his mental energy and all around that, how can he deal with that to the best of his ability? Because it could get, it could get a bit much pretty quickly. And that's why a lot of the time it's always been, um, a lot of the time it's just been primarily a batsman or just pr primarily a bowler in a way with Pat Cummins now doing it because it's just, it's a, it's a lot of mental energy and a lot of thing, information and everything that I've got to, that they've got to absorb. So um, it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Um, he's put, as you said, he's put the, uh, the IPL on the back burner for a while, which, which is great from England's perspective because their test cricket certainly hasn't been great in the last little while. And, but the biggest thing with their test cricket, their biggest challenge is their cattle. Mm. They don't have a lot of world-class players in their team right now. Like we saw during the ashes, they've got a couple but there's quite a few holes that they're trying to fill. Whereas in their one day cricket, in their T20 cricket, <laughs> they've got world-class players all the way through it, which is just where it is right now for their cricket. So they've got to discover some, some world-class test cricketers to be able to try and fill that void. Otherwise, I can't, I can't see things changing a lot compared to what Joe Root did as, a, as the leader of the test team. <clears throat> because in the end, even if you've got a great leader, if your cattle's not great, it's challenging. <laughs> challenging to change the results. Yeah, I I completely agree. What I think I think it got with it got to a point with Joe Root where they where they won like what one game in seventy eight tests or whatever whatever it was like and so like it kind of had to change right. But then I also wonder like what if it gets worse with Stokes and then you lose your best player outside of Joe Root? Then so I wonder what would happen. I mean maybe you're like I guess I had to change, but what if it gets worse? Then what do you do? I mean I don't I don't know. I guess it's all it's all um you know spurious uh, uh, stuff it's anyway. True. But it's a good point. Yep. I want to ask you what I'm about to, um, back just back to the IPL. Um, you, you know, like flagging it early, like all these games have been played in, in Mumbai and then the playoffs are in Calcutta and Ahmedabad. Could that have a drastic effect on who actually wins this thing? Because it also feels at the moment like seven teams can win the IPL. I know Gujarat are the standout team because they've only lost two games. Um, but like... Not in the same way that last year when we went to the UAE for the second half and it was just spinning decks and then and then KKR came from nowhere basically to 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 even make the final. But but like could that have a drastic effect changing the playoffs in a different place where the tournament has existed so far? It could have a little bit of an effect. <clears throat> it could have a bit of an effect for sure, not knowing what the conditions are going to be in Calcutta and then um Underbat as well. So it, it might a little bit, but in the end these the world-class players that are playing they'll be able to adapt to whatever can whatever conditions sort of come their way the probably the the most interesting thing at the moment with the grounds that we're playing on at like most of the games they're on the wickets aren't directly in the center of the ground so um so today for example we're playing on a um on a on a pitch that's really close the closest pitch just about to one side of the of the ground mm. at, um at cci so that has a bit of a dynamic depending because, you know, some batsmen who aren't that powerful, if they just pick the short side and just keep into the short side, um, then, then, you know, some, some players who, if they're playing in the center wicket, really big like, dimensions all the way around means that they might not be as effective. So when they go to sort of potentially bigger grounds um, in center wickets, it could definitely change the dynamic of the game a little bit. But the way the teams, these teams are playing at the moment, like Gujarat um, Titans, they just keep, just finding a way to win, which just you th like the, even um, the game that they played uh, against RCB, <laughs> where they just looked like they were so far gone. And then Miller and Tawati come, came together again. And just mm. the confidence that they've got, they just know that there's a great chance they're going to get across the line like they continue to do. So um, I'm not sure if it's really going to change a lot moving to Calcutta and, and Ahmedabad, depending on just you know, how the conditions sort of change a little bit. But the the way some of the teams are playing in particular, it's going to be an, it's going to be amazing lead up to that final series as a starting point because there's a lot of high quality teams that are a chance to sort of get through to the finals. So those positions are going to be hardly fought, which is going to be exciting. What I I don't know if your position at Delhi precludes you from answering this, but like, can you? Can you see any form line to this tournament? Like, I know there are some, but like, aside from the two new franchises, I mean, every game just seems a toss up. Like, does, it, does that reflect the uh, the beauty and the quality of the IPL, or is it is it just teams working themselves out post a mega auction, uh, bit of conditions, general randomness? So, because it, it does feel hard to pick a team and say 
yep, they're ahead of everyone else. We know Gujarat's up the top, um, but they just succumbed to to Punjab, even though Hardik Pandya said, oh, we are just testing ourselves out. We wouldn't have, you know, would have done. <laughs> but, like, even them, like, I, I can't look at Gujarat and say, oh, look, they're, they're the best. You know, like, I, I, it's, it's hard to decipher. I mean, Rajasthan looked like they had a good setup for a while. But, like, it's just hard to work out who's ahead of anybody else. Is that how yours? I mean, you guys have gone win, loss, win, loss. It's unbelievable. But yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think because of the because of the mega auction, there's more the talent pool's been diluted a little bit, which is exciting because you're seeing new players come in and especially the uh, younger Indian players are doing, a lot of them are putting their hand up and doing very well. It just means there's probably a few more holes in a way that teams are trying to just fill. It might just be one or two holes that the teams are trying to fill and find the right combinations. And that continues to, to go on. Like you can see teams a lot of the time are changing like one or two spots sort of every game to be able to try and find that perfect combination that's going to really work. And a lot of the time that takes probably a couple of, a couple of seasons to really find who your key, key players are and find that sort of perfect balance and combinations that you're looking for. And you're absolutely right. Like every game at the moment that I that I watch and that we play, you just don't you don't know who's going to win, which is a great thing for the the fans who are watching because it's not just a given that Mumbai or CSK, like it has been in the past, are just going to continue to dominate a lot of the time. So, and that's the um, exciting thing for um, me with the Delhi Capitals is around we're like we're really close to be able to to be able to nail it. Like we're getting even though we're not playing at our best, there's little things bowling, batting in the field that we need to sort of consistently do better but we're still even though we're not playing at the best we're still getting quite close to to winning games um and that's the exciting thing for delhi is if we just execute for a little bit longer across the board um with all three facets then we can we've got the skill to be able to sort of get on a roll and i i think every team probably feels that way as well because of this mega auctions mean that just the dynamics around all all the franchises have changed and um and once a team gets on a roll like the good, like <laughs> Gujarat Titans, I've got on a roll, even though they don't seem like they seem like I've got a few holes in their team. Mm. Right? If if um, Shubman Gill and Hardik Pandya don't score runs, then it's just left up to Miller and Tawati, and they've been just coming through just about every time. Um, so they don't seem like they've got incredibly sort of well-rounded team, but gosh, they've won. Well, they've won eight out of eight out of ten games. So um, everything's everything's very open, which is exciting in the lead up to the finals. Um, just, just, just follow up to that. Sorry, he goes. As a coach, how do you help in that situation? And I'm sure you're learning yourself. Like your team's gone win loss, win loss, win loss. Essentially, actually went win loss loss, and then win loss loss. But like, is the answers to those things? in some of the intangibles or in spirit or having a couple of beers afterwards or guys being happy <laughs> or you put your left pad on before your right pad, or is it, you know, you, you take, you take, let's say, you know, the Lord Takur aside of the nets and work on his wide Yorker. Like, is it, is it both? Is it technical? Is it mental? How do you kind of help that alchemy in such a short space of time? What sort of things do you do, you do to execute across all three facets? Yeah, good good word, alchemy. I like it. Using cricket, I haven't really heard that in cricket before, so I yeah. like it. Um, <laughs> the well, for me as a as a coach, it comes down to two, like two aspects. The most important ones are technical. What like what's there? Is there anything technical that's getting in their way of executing their skill over and over again, and especially under pressure? Is it breaking down a little bit? Um, if it's not, then the the mental side of things. Like how, how are they going? How clear are they as they're about to execute, whether it's bat, batting the ball and in the field? Um, are they, have they got the mental energy where they need to? Are they burning it out before the game? Did they like physically burn out their energy before, before the game starts? Like we played a day game um, the other day and a few guys, God, they warmed up early, which meant, and it was hot. So a few guys sort of overcooked themselves a little bit, even in the lead up to the, in the lead up to the game. So, um, which makes it more difficult in the field to be able to keep the energy up the whole 20 overs, because um, you know, that's an atti attitude is, is it when it comes to fielding, but also if it's hot physically, being able to keep your energy up as well is, is challenging. Um, and that's where at times mistakes can be made in the field when your energy sort of down a bit. So, um, so the mental aspect as well is, is really important around just making sure and talking through the mental sort of 
thought process and sequence of thoughts in the lead up to every ball. So there's more chance of being super clear um, every every ball and not sort of being a little bit muddled, which is more chance of not executing your skill and giving the opposition a chance to 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 get you out or, or take take you down from a bowling perspective. So that for me is is just working to those two those two things. Most of the time, the coaches mostly just sort of talk about the technical side of things because that's what you can see. But with all the, most of the dealings that I've had here with with Delhi in particular. Um, not in particular, but Delhi, since I've um, started coaching, a lot of the stuff is around what's their mental like process like and the sequence of thoughts and everything like that. Because if you get that right, then all these highly skilled cricketers normally can execute their skill most of the time. So speaking of that, speaking of guys who execute their skill, um, Shikha Darwin, for obviously formerly of Delhi, but he's over at um, Punjab now. Like This guy's just a machine. Like He's his third leading run score in the tournament this year. Um, consistently gets over 500 runs in the IPL. Have you have you come across him much in in your playing career? Did you did you ever play with him, or you would have played against him for sure? But um, mm. but I mean, this guy he's, he's just a weapon. Yeah, yeah. He's a. I was actually thinking about him the last couple of days because you see some cricketers who they just put all, a lot of their energy into say one day cricket or test cricket, and then over time their their T20 cricket can, can sort of just go down a little bit because they don't they're not as dynamic. They can't score as quickly as when they put all their energy into into test cricket and sort of making sure that game, that part of their game's really sort of set in. But Shikha's someone who across all formats has just, has continued to blossom. And then T20 cricket in particular, initially is more a correct sort of batsman who could take on the game a bit. But um, what he's been able to do consistently, it's, and it's not like he's scoring at like uh, 110, 120 strike rate. He's scoring at 130, 140, 150 strike rate at them scoring consistent runs and um i think yeah it's brilliant i've never played i've never played with him i've only ever played against him um but i've heard a lot of like a lot of great things about him with the people who have played with him um and just his continued evolution as a as a t20 batsman has been beautiful to see like it really is a pleasure to be able to watch him against all types of bowlings he faced he played the gujarat titans the other night on a wicket that was going through bouncing seeming a little bit and he's just that he just you could see him tap into more his test cricket batting, where he started to leave the balls a little bit, played a bit more sort of high percentage, high percentage shots, and ended up getting getting um, Punjab King, Kings to the win. He got fifty odd not out in challenging conditions. The balls were flying through. Um, Joseph was bowling fast, balls taking off, and he just locked in when he needed to from a more a test cricket um, batting perspective. So, yeah, he's one of the ones who's very impressive to be able to bring across all formats of the game and and continue to evolve his batting because you see some other guys who their t20 cricket can start to sort of drop off towards a like at certain times in their career because you have to put a fair bit of energy into keeping those that power hitting that sort of um taking the bowlers down you've got to keep that part of your game going you got to keep practicing and otherwise it can fall away and i've seen it for a few from a few players what i you mentioned young Indian players before. I'm putting you on the spot, but uh, you know, at this point in the tournament, has any has anybody emerged this season that has caught your eye or impressed you? I, I mean, Rinku Singh the other day played a great mm. knock for KKR. He's 24. Uh, a lot of electricity to his knock, I had to say. I have to say, but uh, is there is there anybody that you're looking at? You know, as they just continue their production line of excellent players that you think are. Uh, He's good. He can play. Yeah, Rinku Singh's been Singh has been around for the last couple of mm. uh, last couple of years and t- hasn't really played that much. In the last the last game that he played, he batted very nicely. Um, Abhishek Sharma from SRH has been someone who's done who's done very well consistently this this season, opening the batting. Uh, we're playing uh, him tonight. Sunrise is so interesting. It'd be great to be able to see him and how our bowlers sort of take him on. Uh, so he's been, and I know like uh, he's had big raps on him as well for the. Um, the guys who played like under 19s and that with him, he's certainly um, been given, they talk very highly of him. Uh, the one, the, far, the fast bowl that stands out for me is Umran Malik. Mm. He's just set the this tournament alight. Um, initially, he was just bowling 150 Ks and was getting hit quite a lot because his lengths were a little bit off, a little bit wide, um, a little bit short or full at times. Whereas now, goodness me, like I think I mentioned this last, last week around just working with Dale State and now he's just, his accuracy now with his speed, uh, top of the stumps, 
with the odd bouncer, goodness me, he's been, and, and the odd Yorker as well. Uh, tonight, he's going to be a big challenge for, <laughs> for the Delhi Capitals to see how we take him on and how we can play him because he's been bowling incredibly well. A young guy just, he set this tournament a lot, bowling as fast and as accurate as he has. Just a couple to clean up, Watto. I'll just give you two. Um, one, Tim David. Is, mm. it, is it a good decision for Mumbai to play him? Should it be close to the Australian side or set up? And then two, just on MSD again, he, he hinted at wearing a different colour yellow in a coaching capacity. Are you trying to broker a deal for him to coach the Australian side in some capacity as well? Can you <laughs> deal with that and then we'll close it up. <laughs> nice. Or the Western okay. Warriors, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, old school Western Warriors, I like it. Um, okay, what's the, you've, you've sort of distracted Tim me. David. The first Tim, David. Okay, Tim David. Tim David. Yeah. Um, Tim David. Oh, yes, it was great to be able to see him come out and he batted very nicely. Um, I was always surprised that Mumbai only gave him a couple of games to start with because you've won. It's not whether you spend money on someone, but he's someone who's done well, like well consistently over the last couple of years. So he's someone I thought they should have stuck with him a lot more, um, even for four or five games to, to see what he could do. And the way he batted the other night was, um, was very impressive. Uh, the thing for me, for Tim David around the Aussie setup is... Like he needs to be playing, he needs to be playing all like all formats, I believe, to be able to get an opportunity to be able to play for Australia. Coming into the setup, uh, playing four day cricket, one day cricket, um, and and the big bash. I think that's his. That's the way it should be. I believe that's a precedent that should be set, not just someone who's only playing some some T Twenty tournaments and sort of getting and yeah, which he's doing very well. There's no question he's a quality player, uh, but I think the precedent needs to be set that it's a commit like a full commitment across mm. the board to get your way, to work your way into the Australian setup, um, mm. especially as a younger sort of cricketer in particular. So that's, that's what I think for him to be able to get into the Australian setup. And I think that that's my sort of just feel on where that's going as well. Why he's not in there at the moment, because he's a quality, he's a quality player. I think he's got to make a, a fuller commitment to playing all formats across the, across the board. And then, then I think he'd be, he'd come really straight into contention because <laughs> he's a quality mm. player. Um, and then MSD, look at whatever in the end, it'll be, I think, I think he's probably more so talking about different yellow as in like more a coaching shirt more so than a, than a, um, playing, uh, a CSK playing shirt. I'd be blown away if he does anything else, but be involved with, with CSK after he, after he finishes playing, whatever that is, because he's just, he's just CSK through and through. Um, and I know talking to him as well, um, the times we had a lot of chats, um, that's one thing that I know he wants to, he wants to get into, whether it is coaching, whether it is like director of cricket, been able to put things together for CSK, I'd be um, blown away if he doesn't move into, into that job um, and that role whenever. There's no rush. He's obviously still playing well. He's doing a great job. So um, he's just CSK through and, through and through. So I'd be surprised if he didn't go down that path. But, but like if, you know, the Indian executives like from the BCCI really tried to woo Ponting, Punter, mm. you know, to get involved in the Indian setup. And as an Australian, he told us that by the way, mm. and he said that publicly, <laughs> but like, and as an Australian, like it'd break our hearts, you know, if, if, if Punter was, was walking around in the Indian kit, but you know, do you think we could get, I know it would break Indian hearts if MSD came over to, to Australia, but you know, do you think we could get him, just to add a little bit of rock and roll stuff to the dressing room, you know, a little bit of hair stuff, a little bit, a couple of stories. Cause, cause we're getting a bit, um, we're a bit cerebral now on the Australian side, you know, it's Andrew McDonald, it's Dan Vittori. It's all a little bit, it's, a, it's sort of get, we're a geek team now. This is a bit of MSD just for, for a couple of yarns. <laughs> Look, you know, yeah, that'd be, it'd be very, it'd be great, but that certainly wouldn't be, wouldn't be happening. No um, no <laughs> okay. No chance. He's, he's such, he's so, you know, he's so passionate about, about India um, and in particular about CSK as well. So yeah, it'd be in a perfect world. It'd be good to be able to have someone like him around Australian cricket, but yeah, they'll, that's I seem to have frightened you with this hypothetical. I'm sorry, because <laughs> yeah, <Chef, a> <laughs> I know they'll be approaching you to broker the deal. Um, you're not aware of that yet. But um, anyway, uh, sorry about that. What a Shane Watson, T20 stars, everyone. And a T20 star. Uh, thanks so much for joining us again, mate. Uh, we'll catch you next week. All the best to Delhi tonight and the other teams, because we're not biased in any way. But it'd be good if Delhi won just from a content perspective. And from my perspective as well, my first coaching gig would be great, great if we continue to play well and get through, get through to the latter stages of this tournament. But um, great to catch up as always, boys. Appreciate it.